Coming up, I showcase my socks. So I'm rocking white and gray. Ferocious dog. Just wasn't used to it. Let's see. I devour some tasty strawberries. Mm. I'm dripping. And will the new engine survive? Buenas and welcome to part 11 of Project Chicago, the beautiful, lovely Alpina B7, for which I had to rebuild the engine twice. In the previous episode, we went from a completely bare block to a fully running engine. That was a lot of work. And in this one, it's time to take it for a test drive, see how the engine feels, if it's going to last. So let's get to work, put the front end back on and then red line or maybe not. But anyway, let's start swinging tools. Donde esta el stick? Now I need to remember how everything goes back together again. Oh yeah, look who's fixed and looking mint. First, this contraption. Now you're gonna do whatever comes here. Well, where does this go? First, we need to hook up the cable. Don't scratch the paint. Is that normal? Nothing seems normal anymore. Click. Still need to figure out where that phone thing goes. No, it seems like it goes like this. Ah, yes. Uh. <coughs> Thank you. There was a small stupid cover there. I'm going to do all of the covers in the engine bay. Nice. That's everything under the hood done. Got to tidy up the wiring here. Transmission cover. Reinforcement plate. <laughs> Plastic cover. Okay, that's everything buttoned up and we're officially ready for the test drive. Here we go. The second first test drive. Got my lucky shorts here. These are about eight years old. My favorite t-shirt and one very important ritual that I didn't do last time. You gotta wear two different color socks. So I'm rocking white and gray. Very important. If you don't do that, well, you saw what happened with the previous engine. So we are all set. This is going to be the third start. Let's hear the cold start. Bellissima. What are you doing? Check engine light. All right, so we're off to a great start. Got a check engine light misfire and code for the camshaft position sensor. Not sure why, but let's start it again and see if it comes back. I just cleared the codes. No, she's not happy. Despite wearing the correct color combo socks, we ain't going anywhere. And if you're sitting over there and thinking, the f is wrong with it now, I don't know. I don't know. I'm completely baffled. You all heard it running correctly in the previous episode. I started it two times. It was running flawlessly. No issues whatsoever. Now I started, it's running rough and I get a code for camshaft position sensor bank to intake. So I replaced the set sensor with the spare ones that I have lying around. No change. I replaced all four, no change. I traced the wiring back to the DME box over there. Everything seems fine. All of the connectors are connected. I reset DME adaptations and I tried a few other things, nothing helps. It's immediately popping up with that code. 
So something is clearly wrong here. Now there are two components that I used from the donor engine that could cause this and those are venous solenoids and venous units, camshaft adjusters. The reason I use them from the donor engine is they looked very clean, much cleaner than the old components that were in the engine, in the previous engine and they saw metal shavings so I thought these parts normally don't go bad on N62 so might as well use the clean stuff that I have from the donor engine. But the previous engine, before it blew up, it was running absolutely fine, no codes or anything like that. And everything is the same apart from those two components. So now I'm going to start by replacing the Vanna solenoids, which means I have to take the stupid supercharger out again and its bracket. Put everything back together, start it, see if that helps. If not, then I have to remove the valve cover on bank two and physically check the timing. If it's off, well, I'm going to turn into a big question mark. And if it's not, then I'm going to proceed and replace the Venus units, put everything back together again, start it and see what's going on. Here we go, Sally. Because of the supercharger, everything is pain to do in this car. Here's the bracket. So disconnect the wiring. All right, solenoid number one. All right, all ones going in. Connector clear, even though I've already done this. I'm gonna do the same thing on bank one, put everything back together, start it and see what's what. All right, I've put everything back together. Now we're gonna start it and we should be able to tell pretty quickly if it's fixed or not. Nope, not fixed. Check engine light is back. Yay. So according to live data on IMPA, the timing is not off, it's in green, but I don't know how correct that thing is. There has to be something that I'm missing. So I don't know what else to do other than to remove the valve cover and check the timing and replace the Vanus units with the old ones. By the time I'm done, I'm gonna be able to take this engine apart with my eyes closed. So let's check the cog on the back of the camshaft. It's giving us issues. I mean, nothing wrong there. It's not loose. So now we need to rotate the engine until a TDC and check the timing. The crank is locked. Intake. Sitting perfectly, perfectly, perfectly flush. Exhaust. Perfect as well. So the engine is still in time and that's not our issue. Thank God, because if it skipped timing, that would be really, really bad. So nothing out of the ordinary. The engine is still in time. Oh, uh, me, you stupid. I found the issue. So I was just babbling into the camera and I leaned over and I saw it says X as in exhaust and in as in intake. But this is the intake side. I flipped around the Venus units and that's, that's our issue. I am such a doofus. Absolutely my fault. Let's fix it. There's this one long bolt that goes through the bracket, then through the alternator bracket, then through another bracket, and then through the alternator. It just never ends. Now you can see pretty clearly a mistake that I made. This side here, this is intake, and you can see it says exhaust. And on that one over there, that's exhaust side, and it says intake. So I flipped them around. I'm super angry at myself right now because I tried to pay attention on pretty much everything and something as simple as this, where it even says where it goes. I make a mistake. Just really, really annoying. 
But anyway, let's let's fix it. On bank one, the exhaust unit has a cutout for the vacuum pump, so unlike here, you can't physically swap them around. You know the drill, slacking off Vanos bolts while holding the camshaft. All right, so now we can push on the guide here and remove the Vanus unit. I still can't believe it. And this one. They look 101% identical. So I wonder what's different inside that it caused it not to work correctly. Well, this is the other side around. Whatever that is, that spring. Anyway, I'm not gonna take the chances with the with these units from the donor engine, I'm just gonna use the old ones because I know they worked fine. Now you're gonna time the engine. Make sure it's sitting perfectly flush. So get a flashlight. And it's sitting perfectly flush on both sides and now I can torque the Venus bolt. That's the Vanos bolts tightened. Now we're gonna rotate the engine twice and verify that the timing is still correct. That's two full rotations. Spot on, exhaust. Bob's your uncle. That's spot on as well. I'm gonna do this once more, just to be sure. So two full rotations, verify that the timing is correct. If yes, then I can put back the timing cover and everything else. Another round done. Sitting flush. Yep, perfect. We are good to go. So thankfully I was sort of expecting this type of adventure and I ordered all new gaskets. Brand new gasket, clean timing cover. So I have zip ties holding the gasket in place. All right, with the magic of editing, I'm just gonna skip to the end where we get to start the car again. Aloha, time to... Yes. No check engine light, running smooth. Issue resolved. Now we're gonna do a small test drive in the yard, just back and forth, make sure everything works as it should and it's not gonna give us any issues once we're on the road. Oh, the white person. Stop! Alrighty, she's working properly again. Now I could edit all of this out and make it seem like I don't make mistakes, but I do. I'm a human as well. That being said, it's a pretty stupid mistake and I'm really, really, really angry at myself because it says on the thing, exhaust intake, how do you mix that up? Really disappointed that I didn't pay more attention there. Thankfully, it didn't cause any damage. It's just gonna cause the engine not run right. Venus is not gonna operate, hence the code. It was confused. Now that it's flipped the right way around, we can finally go for the test drive. So I'm gonna put the covers back on and let's hit the road. But first, we need to celebrate. It's blueberry muffin time. It's been a while. I mean, I had them in between making videos and whatnot, but I think this is a good occasion to have a blueberry muffin. Some for you as well. There you go. Tasty, isn't it? Come in! There we go. New attempt. How far will we make it? I'm still wearing the correct socks.
every time off we go all right so here's how we're gonna drive up to 4000 rpm with moderate acceleration just keep the revs going not too hard we're gonna do well we're gonna aim for around 150 200 kilometers and then come back and change the oil if everything is still okay then go and drive a bit more let's see how it goes no radio no ac we are at 206,703 kilometers i reset the board computer so it's gonna count how many kilometers we did we've done one kilometer man the suspension is bad if the car survives the engine that is that's the next thing we're going to do new shocks glorious frankfurt roads unlike the last time where i went pretty far away this time around we're gonna stay in the area so when we break down the tow isn't so expensive here's the autobahn so accelerate let go of the throttle so far it's on forgot to turn on the temperature gauge so I got to pull over and do that it's 93 degrees Celsius which is spot on Accelerate on its own 10 kilometers. Gonna get off the Autobahn and onto the back roads. Let's see, knocking sounds. I think it's still working fine. Yes, shifts nice. I think we made it 110 kilometers with the last engine. 70 miles, I wanna say something like that. And my good friend Ollie from Munich, from OE Motors, uh, he coded the cluster and changed everything from miles to kilometers. acceleration it's 4,000 rpm let it decelerate thirty six kilometers in let's pull over see how the engine sounds Definitely smoother than with the sleeved block. That much I can tell already. Just sounds like a normal N62 does. Okay, let's continue. kilometers in 60 more kilometers and we can rebuild the engine how are the wipers see I was going for the wipers and I almost bumped the transmission oh yeah the wipers are glorious changed never oh e36 clean e38 Man, I need another one. Miss Project Dubai is a good car, unlike this third. 
So E65, a lot of people hate on it because of its looks, that it's not a proper successor to the E38, but it is a proper successor to the E38. Put the looks to the side. I actually like the look of it, but I know a lot of people don't, but that's very much subjective. The car itself, it is the last proper 7 Series. After that, it's rental cars, appliances and wheels, you know, the boring stuff. The F Series is just... It's not a proper BMW. This still has that proper BMW DNA in it. It's amazingly engineered. Yarax from Czech Republic actually sent me a documentation on how the E65 was developed, engineered. And it's just when you read and you realize what they've done, it's really impressive. So E65, it's a good car in my book. Not as good as E38. E38 is still by far my favorite, but E65, a good car. I'm not sure what the future brings with the Alpina. If I keep it, I'm probably going to keep it after everything that I've done to it. But I would very much like to get E65 760i. That is the last naturally aspirated 12-cylinder engine that BMW made. If I'm not mistaken, 455 PS. Now that's an engine. Really want that one day. Also, I am actively looking for E92 M3. With the six-speed, and it can't be black any other color is fine but six speed and not black those are the two main criteria. if anyone has one for sale or knows or has seen one do let me know preferably it has a rod knock so i can rebuild the engine on the channel but i really really want to get one of those it's actually my dream car Ooh, strawberries i think i want strawberries be right back Hallo. Tschüss. Hallo. Super. Ja, genau. Sehr lecker. Vielen Dank. Danke. Ciao. Yes. Have you ever seen such big strawberry in your life? Mm. I love strawberries. Mm. I'm dripping. They're so juicy. Mm. I think another one. All right, let's continue. Thumbs up for that lady over there and her strawberries. Really good. 75 kilometers in, I had three strawberries, I think, and the engine is still working. The engine pulls clean and sounds good. Me gusta. One hundred kilometers. I mean, I can't hear it, but I think it's not knocking. Stop it. Here we go. One hundred and ten kilometers in, the engine still sounds healthy. If you hear like a scraping sound in the background, that turned out to be a bad AC compressor, but more on that at the end of the video. Wouldn't it be spectacular if it blew up now? And this, during this heavy rain, 115 kilometers. So the second engine has officially outlived the first one. Well, the second one. We're gonna start heading back so I can let the oil drain and go home for dinner. And then tomorrow we'll do a bit more driving. E36, hello Bruda, looks good. We are back in the dojo. We covered 147 kilometers and the engine survived, which is lovely. And as far as how it sounds, I think it sounds great. Mike is probably going to pick up a lot of noise and stuff, but I don't hear any knocks or obnoxious foul train or anything like that. Just sounds like a good working engine. So 147 kilometers, perfect 
coolant temperature, no check engine light, no smoke from the exhaust. All is well in Alpina world. I am very, very pleased thus far. And I think the engine is probably gonna sound even smoother and nicer once we have full synthetic in it. But for this braking period, we're gonna keep using mineral oil. All right, let's shut it down and drain the oil. We'll remove the cover tomorrow to check for oil leaks. But now we're just gonna let the oil drain. Looks good. All right. So no shavings on the magnet, it's clean. The oil filter as well, no big chunks. It's just filtering some other crap and stuff, but there are no big metal chunks. Glitter in the oil filter cap, which is to be expected during this braking period, but no big chunks of metal in there. All looks good. So this is the only filter that should be used in Alpina. That's the cap thoroughly cleaned. Very important to pre-lube the oil filter. Like that. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna remove the reinforcement plate so I can have a closer look here. I think it's dry, so I can put back the rubber caps. So the oil pan is leaking here. I'll need to reseal that. I had that previously as well, and I ended up using rhinestone seal on the bottom and the top, and then it stopped. This time around, I only used a little bit on the top, but it's still leaking. I think this cover here, it's not straight, it's bent, despite having screws all over the place, but leaking oil. So I placed an order for a new gasket. I'll replace that again, and then I'll use rhinestone seal, because what else? I have an oil leak from the power stream pump hose. And that is a big problem because that hose is discontinued. You cannot buy it brand new anymore. And it's Alpina specific because they relocated the power stream fluid reservoir from here to here. So you can't just buy any random hose. Have to figure something out there. And I have a slight leak from the oil thermostat as well. Anyway, so I'm putting these plugs back here. Plugs put back here, here, and here, and this one I'll need to order because it's torn. Fresh oil. Okay, that's good. Now you're gonna check the rest of the fluids. That's perfect. That's perfect as well. And also off camera, I verified the transmission level fluid as well. So we are good to go. No smoke, sounds good. Like a sewing machine. Let's do some more driving. Gonna go get some go-go juice. Be right back. Nah, not gonna lock it, someone steals it. It'll do me a favor. Don't think anyone would dare to even steal this thing. All right, let's hit the road. This time we're gonna take the same route that we took with the engine that blew up. Autobahn. Hopefully it doesn't rain again. Excelente. All right. That's pretty bad. Feels good, it does feel good. Mm -hmm. 
What a beautiful road. Pena handles magnificently. Look at that. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. For such a big, heavy car, the handling is incredible. And it's nice and sunny again. Should probably recharge the AC, but I'm gonna wait until, well, until I'm sure that the engine is not gonna blow up and I don't need to take it out again. Man, it's such a nice car to drive. It really is. I hate the steering wheel. I don't know why Alpina just didn't develop a steering wheel, a proper one for E65, but instead they just took the E61. That is the ugliest steering wheel in the world that BMW ever made. Two hundred kilometers in. Muy excelente. I don't know where I am, but it's very pretty. I'm gonna pull over real quickly, just to have a quick listen of the engine. Still sounds good. Same exit as the last time where I first, well, where we first heard the knock. How about now? 250 kilometers so far. No knock. I'm even gonna pull over at the same spot, face up fears, and change the GoPro battery. Ooh. Yeah, the crime scene. Very good. Got the fresh battery in. And this time we're gonna drive back to the dojo under its own power. That's how you do that. Go back to the place you failed and um, yeah, drive off. Look, a tow truck and Alpina is not on it. So the goal is just to keep the RPMs moving. I want to give a shout out to Troy J. Up from the US. He's been giving me some useful advice and really good tips regarding the engine rebuild process i mean he's rebuilt like million engines so those tips came in handy thanks dude so i want to address something real quickly because it seems to me there are still some people out there that are confused as to what i've done with the engine they think that i've machined the pistons but clearly you didn't watch until the end of that video i think it was part nine i want to say where i explained what we're going to do so what we did is we took stock N62B44 block, which we determined is exactly the same as Alpina H1 block. Alpina just put their stamp on it. But as far as specification, dimensions, design, bore, stroke, everything is exactly the same. So we used stock N62B44 block, and then we put Alpina lower compression pistons in it, forged crankshaft and connecting rods. Basically entire Alpina rotating assembly in stock N62B44 block and then just bolted the heads and then just bolt and then just bolted the heads 
and all other Alpina specific parts. And these engines, Alpina H1 V8 engines, they suffer from scored cylinders. And someone asked a really good question, actually not one, but many of you. How are we gonna stop that from happening here? Well, from the factory, Alpina used very, very tight piston to Val clearance, 0.01 millimeter. Now it's aluminum pistons, aluminum blocks, so they're going to expand together. So that's not so bad. I mean, that's common practice even for BMW engines. That's what you're gonna get from the factory. Factory specification is 0.01 to 0.04. But when we measured the original block, it was 0.01. On top of that, they decided to go with stock N62 thermostat, which is 105 degrees Celsius, and then use 5W30 oil, in some cases 0W30 oil. That's really thin. And then you have forced induction engine that's making 500 horsepower. When it's under load, it's gonna see temperatures as high as 110, 115 degrees Celsius. That's a lot and that's in my opinion, when damage can occur and you end up with scored cylinders, not enough lubrication, engine is too hot, and well, that happens. If you look at any M models from that era, E60 M5, E92 M3, E39 M5, they all have 79 degrees Celsius thermostat and they run 10W60 oil from the factory. And they don't suffer from scored cylinders, not one bit. So I think combination of a supercharger, thin oil, and an engine that's running really hot is, is how these engines end up with scored cylinders. So to help and hopefully stop that from happening, we are running a colder thermostat. Uh, right now it's at 92 degrees Celsius, and depending on how I drive, it's running from 90 to 95, which is spot on. The thermostat, it's from Yarax from Czech Republic, works really well, so thank you so much. And then after the braking period is done, we're gonna run 5W50 oil, which is really good oil. I run it in my E39 M5 and E60 M5, and it's gonna provide much better protection than 5W30 when the engine is under load and we push it really hard. That about sums it up. So far we covered 320 kilometers. The engine is running absolutely fine. We're gonna do another oil change just because I have a ton of that oil from Liquid Molly. So every time I go out for a drive, I'm going to change oil and just keep flushing it from all that rebuild crap and break in material. Sounds good. And it's not knocking. The more I drive it, the better it sounds. Good unit. 321 kilometers in. Pretty happy so far. Let's drain the oil again. When draining hot oil, try to practice wearing safety glasses because you don't want hot oil in your eyes. So the oil is starting to look a lot better, a lot less glitter than before. So. This is what we're gonna do. Drive it, change oil, drive it, change oil until we stop seeing glitter. Oil filter, clean as well. I'm gonna go ahead and say the engine is breaking in well. Nice. Quick update on Project Chicago. We decided to take it on a road trip. Visit some friends in Paderborn, which is just under 300 kilometers from Frankfurt. One way is a perfect opportunity to break in the engine. It's working flawlessly so far. And this is Mutsi, tiny, beautiful dog. You're babysitting her for some friends. She's absolutely beautiful. She tripped me out a little bit because when we were driving, the car doesn't have any AC, so I tilted up the sunroof. And occasionally I hear the sound and I thought the wheels or something was rubbing and I just couldn't figure it out for 20 minutes. I even pulled over to see what's going on and then I turned over and I realized it's her. She's breathing heavily and making that noise. It's not the car. Never had a dog in the car before, so just wasn't used to it. Let's see. 
She's a beautiful dog, really, really smart. She was in the back seat with my girlfriend. She was kind of hot, so we pulled over a lot to check on the engine and walk her a little bit. But the Alpina is doing good. We've done 612 kilometers, so another 280 on the way back, and we're nearing 1,000. But I can already tell you that the engine is fully broken in. The exhaust note has changed. It sounds a lot better and it pulls just beautifully. It feels like a really, really good, healthy engine. But still, I'm gonna do another 400 kilometers or so, change the oil two more times, and then we're gonna switch to 5W50 synthetic and then slowly raise the RPM limit and then it'll be full send. Come, Matsi. Come. Be there, you smart dog. Don't be scared when I start the car, please. Be careful. Of course, you're not gonna be scared. You're a smart dog. Yeah, I mean, the engine sounds great. So I'm not too hard on it, just keeping the RPMs moving, but not too gentle either. Some impressions about the car itself. I hate the steering wheel so much. It's way too big and I hate looking at it. I hate it so much. It's the ugliest steering wheel the BMW ever made. And I'm really questioning myself whether I should refurbish it or just put something else. I also discovered that the seats are not massaged. I think active is the correct word to call it, but it works really well. When you sit, it's massaging your butt and it feels kind of nice. They're also cooled and heated. These are the same seats as in Project Rally E60 M5, and they're the most glorious seats ever. So the car is very comfortable. The suspension is horrible. It's like a boat. It's waffling all over the place when I drive it on the Autobahn, so can't wait to do the shocks. I already ordered them. Turns out they are standard E65 shocks. There's nothing Alpina special to them, so they're not that expensive. Alpina only put Ibox springs on them. So we're gonna do that and then it should drive much, much nicer. No AC, that's next on my list. Once the engine is broken in, recharge the compressor. That should work. Ah yeah, the blower fan is not working, so gotta fix that first. The radio is not working. Gotta fix small things like this. Something is broken in this door. The soft close mechanism is not stopping itself. So when you try to close it now, it won't do it. But if you close it and do this, it'll work. So I think this is flawed on two doors, one more door on that side, gotta fix that. And I think that's as far as electronic parts of the car go. Anyway, now Mutsi and I will go for a walk. Right Mutsi? Come. Let's go. Anyway, that's the update on Alpina for now. It's staying alive. Cap of James! We're back from our road trip safe and sound the car performed flawlessly not a single issue didn't use a sip of oil fuel consumption i got 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers and that's pretty much driving like grandma few pulls i mean lots of pulls but still that's pretty bad this thing is gonna be horrible on on, on fuel once we really get into the throttle but anyway the engine still sounds really healthy we covered 907 kilometers so far and now i'm gonna i want to go over 1000 kilometers and that's it we're done we're not gonna do any more mineral oil or braking period we're gonna go back to the shop drain the rest of the mineral oil dump some 5w50 full synthetic in it i mean as i said already after 200 300 kilometers i could feel that the engine was fully broken in so so far everything is going great i am a happy man Alpina seems to be happy as well, so let's do another 100 kilometers and we can pop the bubbly! I don't really drink champagne. Pop the beer! Like the beer. Let's do a clean pull. Five thousand RPM. Nice. Driving my Alpina. Feeling like a pimp. Ooh, there's an angry Ford. Ka! 
driver behind me. Never take me. It'll be the last time in your life. I know it was Fiesta. Whoa, did you see that? Very boat like. That's what I'm talking about. It's like row, row, row. Shocks are really bad. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but when I was putting this engine back together just for fun, um, I heated up one of the Alpina pistons to around 90, 100 degrees Celsius. And I measured before and after how much it expands. And it expanded 0.07 millimeters, which, yes, it's very tiny, but for an engine, it's huge, huge. And if you remember the guy who sleeped the block, he left the clearance of 0 0.025 to 0 0.030, so 0 0.03, and the piston expanded 0 0.07. So that engine just stood no chance whatsoever. I mean, cast iron sleeves, they're gonna expand ever so slightly, but they don't expand nowhere near as much as aluminum block. So it just, it had no chance, that engine at all, which is why it started knocking. And we have no errors on the dash whatsoever. I even cleared the airbag light. That was due to battery being disconnected so many times and discharged. Being overtaken by VW Passat. It's the final countdown. Ta -da -da -da. Ta -da 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 -da. There we go. 1,000 kilometers. Celebration. No, come on. Pretty sure those are the correct lyrics to that song. Alpina is working well. Good money pit. All right, that's enough Autobahn for now. I gotta say, transmission, engine, everything feels very, very smooth and nice. There you have it. No more glitter in the oil. Looks nice and clean. And the engine has been broken in properly. No abnormal wear, no big metal chunks. And those are all good signs. So with that, we're gonna switch to 5W50 full synthetic. Pre-lubed oil filter. oil and filter are back in and I addressed all of the oil leaks that I had off camera. I had a leaking power steering line here that's been discontinued and I had a leak from the engine oil cooler lines that bolted to the oil thermostat. Replaced the o-rings and I also used rhinoplast on those o-rings because that's a liquid sealant and it works really really well. I also used that to seal uh, that rubber hose because as I said it's been discontinued so you can see some blue stuff over there. It stopped the leak completely. So as of now, the Alpina is leak free as well. Pretty unbelievable. Full synthetic 5W50. That's the good stuff. All right, let's hear how she likes full synthetic. Purrs like a tiger. I started hearing some sort of scraping sound coming from bank one. It sounds like a starving power steam pump, but obviously it's not that. And I ended up talking to Yarox, the E65 guru from Czech Republic. And he told me, oh yeah, AC compressors are known to go bad. The bearing in the pulley is shot and it starts making that noise. And sure enough, remove the AC belt and the noise is completely gone. It sounds even better now. Very, very smooth. Good Alpina. So add the AC compressor to the list. Thankfully I didn't recharge the system yet. Not sure if I'm gonna have to replace the whole thing or if I can just get the bearing. We'll see. Not looking forward to taking that out again because there's not much space, but I am glad the noise is gone because it was kinda, it was bugging me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. The mighty Alpina lives. It seems that the journey with Project Chicago might come to an end after all. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. 
knock on crankshaft. So in the next episode, we're going to focus on getting this thing to pass through and tooth inspection, which means regulations. We got to replace the headlights and taillights. They need to be European spec and safety things like wiper blades and whatnot. Once that is done, well, we're going to do some more driving and fix up the rest of the car, cosmetical stuff, refurbish the rims, the front bumper, the rear bumper. I have a European license plate holder in the back that we need to paint as well. Sort out the interior, make it really nice, fix up the electrical stuff, and then take the car to Cologne, to my friends from Gion. They have a state-of-the-art facility there for detailing cars, and they're going to go to town on this one and make it look spectacular. Really, really looking forward to that. I know we didn't do much wrenching in this episode, but the engine needed to be broken in. And I wanted to put around 1,000 kilometers on it just to make sure it's going to last. Thankfully, it did. And I'm very happy and proud. I want to give a massive thank you to my friend Fabian for lending me his plates. Without his help, we wouldn't be able to break in the engine, let alone drive it. So that was a huge help. Thank you so much. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. I would appreciate that. And I'll see you very soon. Ciao.